Hi, my name is Jordan Grace and I'm here to talk to you today about how I got my food product from being made in my kitchen straight into the hands of Richard Branson. Let's get into it. By the end of this video, you're going to know how I developed my brand from being in a kitchen to a factory within a year. That includes branding, website, crowdfunding and more. Exposure is going to be the thing that makes you grow. Your product might be amazing, but if you can't get it out to anyone or no one is interested in it, it's going to get nowhere. So you might be thinking, who is this guy with pink hair that's trying to help me? I get it, right? I've got a degree in advertising. I've worked for global brands like Red Bull, Coke. I made TV adverts, digital campaigns, and more. So I'd like to think I have an idea of roughly of what we're talking about. Before we get too far into it, just make sure to hit the subscribe ring the bell and give me a thumbs up. I think the number one thing to get right is your brand. It's your first impression to whoever is gonna see your product, whether that's on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever it may be. That isn't just your logo, right? That includes your tone of voice, your brand colors, how you present it to the world, right? And more importantly, I think within food or any kind of brand actually, your story needs to be solid and you need to put your story on every single platform that you're using, right? You wouldn't use a sans serif font for a brain surgeon. Just, just as you wouldn't use a serif font for Crayola. You have that base level of how you present a brand. Obviously it's in typography and the stylistic way that you, you design it. So make sure you've got all of those right. Because if you're not happy with them now and you're at the startup stage, then tweak them because this is the best time to do that. If you're at very early stages with your brand and you haven't developed a logo for it yet, you don't need to have a graphic designer or be a graphic designer. Obviously that's in my background, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for me. But I'll put a link in the description below where you can get a business model canvas and a brief template. So a brief is what you pass on to an agency normally. So you create a brief, you write in there how you wanna present your brand, what assets you think are necessary, what you want your brand to say, what your story is essentially, okay? And then the graphic designer or the team will then create your branding for you. To cut costs on that, the best thing to do is go to a advertising school or a graphic design school or a university or find a recent graduate whose work you like. I think the big thing here is, is that your product should be killer. You know, you can't polish a turd, essentially. You just need to have a killer product. And essentially that product could sell itself if it was good enough, right? With food, obviously the branding is gonna be quite important because that <laughs> you need to make it look appetizing through the branding. So I get it. You're gonna to wanna to have a good impression when you first release your product. But again, you're a startup, so you're not expected to have like this crazy design or it doesn't need to be perfect at this point, I don't think, right? When we won the Voom competition, I was just using plain recycled boxes and just putting a sticker on it. That was it, I didn't have fancy printing or anything like that, we just had a nice product. And we had the cheapest way of, of branding the product itself, so we weren't spending loads of money on that because we were still validating the idea, right? That's what you wanna do, that's what you wanna to get to. You wanna validate that there's demand for your product before you start investing loads of money into designing this really nice brand for a product that might just be similar to everything else that's already out there. I think with foods, you still wanna find a USP, you wanna have that unique selling point how can it be used or why is it different or why should they buy your product and i think a good thing to incorporate now uh, more recently is social responsibility in your product so for me that was using food that was wasted so it's just rotting away so we we're utilizing a need for that product and then we were increasing the pay of the people that would be farming it to, to a decent rate you know what i mean so in india obviously people aren't paid very much money for those types of jobs so that was our ambition as a business and that's a mission that we had. So you wanna have a really solid mission that sells your brand and makes your product stand out. If you're just selling a product that everyone else is already selling and there isn't that much of a difference, you really wanna have a think about how can you make it different? If you're a little bit further along and you're getting to that design stage and you're working on stuff and you haven't already done any mock-ups, which is essentially just how you wanna see, you know, how your product is gonna look, then you can download mock-ups. I'll put again a link in the description you can check those out. It's essentially a file, say if you were selling ice cream, you could get a, a pot and it'd just be plain. And you just input your own logo and it makes it look like a realistic ice cream pot. So it's great for your social media or anything like that, just as you're getting started, so you can look like a more professional brand. Step two would be your website. 
Well, the website is where people are going to find you, right? So it's going to be very important. A lot of people will just kind of make their website on Wix and then just forget about it. It's not going to be good enough for getting your brand out there and getting people to recognize it. Within two months, we had Harrods contact us from launching as, as a startup in the kitchen, by the way, and that was through the website. We did that by using Wix's inbuilt SEO tools and by being quite clever with the name. So Jackfruit was kind of a very big product. It was kind of just coming out there when we launched and uh, we incorporated the name into our brand name. So we called Project Jackfruit, right? So so that helped us get higher up in the ranking on pages and you search on a search engine like Google. So essentially what you want to do on your website is if you're not already start posting blogs, best thing to do is have evergreen content, which is content that essentially never expires. So that might be, say, if you're an ice cream company, it's all I can think about right now is ice cream, I must want some. If you're an ice cream company, you could have an article about five unique ways you can use ice cream you know so that's that's a post that people will always be searching for whereas if you make a post about something that's trending so if you make a post about the five hottest foods of 2020 that's going to be something that will probably get you a bit of traffic from the get-go and get people coming to your website but after that they're not going to find that article because it'll probably be 2021 or 2022 and people aren't going to be looking for that anymore right so the best thing to do is make a mix of those articles and don't underestimate blogs right how many times do you search for stuff how to how to do this utilize that another thing that kind of ties in with your brand and your website is your tone of voice you need to have a solid tone of voice your tone of voice needs to make sense with your brand as well say if you're a state company you're probably going to be a little bit more artisan you're going to choose your words a bit more carefully than if you're a playful ice cream brand again, right? You'd be a bit more youthful in the way that you express the brand and the way that you talk about stuff, especially on Instagram, right? So for our jackfruit company, we were running like little competitions like this. I mean, you can see how we were playing with our niche, millennials, right? That was engaging people. So if you're not already, again, competitions are a good thing to do. You just offer two, three, one packet of whatever you're selling and you do what everyone else does which is just a like comment and a share and you get into the draw and that's it it's simple you get people engaged with your product you get more exposure and that's all you need is exposure ensure that you keep updating your website do not like design it when you first launch and then never go back to it go and have a look at what your competitors are doing See what they have that they're doing well. See what they're not doing well. Keep an eye on your competitors, right? And keep tweaking your website. Consider that you're the customer. Always sit in, in, in the seat of the customer and think about if you're gonna post that or you're gonna sell this, what is the need that you're fulfilling, right? Obviously with food, it's gonna be just like guilty pleasure or they just wanna eat something nice. So see if there's a twist that you can go with. Mailing lists are again, very important. <laughs> we built up thousands of people on mailing lists at events and on the website. Make sure you've got a mailing list on your website. If you haven't and you haven't made it attractive, you absolutely should be because you've got <laughs> exposure to people on demand. You just post out your emails, send them offers, discounts. If you're selling online on your website, you should be using your mailing list super regularly. Step three is taking your brand from zero to hero, hard. Honestly, the cooking thing was the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my life. It was every single day, crawling in the kitchen. I was just, I was not enjoying it to be honest. So <laughs> in terms of you guys, you're probably gonna be more passionate about this. I never even cooked in my life before. I just spent a month working on recipes until I thought they were nice and my flatmates thought they were nice. And then I quit my job, I went home and I signed up to NCAS and I started doing a street food event. So I got the brand out there. I think once you're upscaling and you're, you're getting bigger and you're thinking about moving out of the kitchen, that's when it gets a little bit trickier because you're thinking, do I invest in a commercial kitchen or rent a commercial kitchen or should I do crowdfunding? Crowdfunding for me was definitely the one thing to do. You should absolutely do it. Even if you have enough money to go and get a commercial kitchen, you should do crowdfunding because one, validates your idea. Two, it's exposure. We found our factory through crowdfunding. It gave us loads of PR. We ended up in Olive Magazine. We were in news all around the world. We were in Indian news, national newspapers in the UK. Obviously we played the game, right? So we weren't just expecting them to write about us, but once we successfully crowdfunded or once we'd won a competition, we'd always send out emails to people that were running these websites. So for a vegan company, we contacted Plant-Based News and Vegan Life. You just have to be prepared to always sing your own praises to people because if you don't, no one else is gonna do it for you. If you don't have enough likes on your Instagram to do crowdfunding right now or you're not confident in it, you need to be doing more street food events. If you can't do street food events, can you collaborate with anyone? Can you sell your product in smaller stores? Can you 
sell it with other people that are doing street food events. Again, if you're doing an ice cream thing and someone has a dessert company or they have a dessert stall, can you collaborate with them and put it in there? Do you know what I mean? You wanna look at ways that you can keep getting your brand out there rather than it just being you grinding every single day. You need to find other people that can sell your product and promote it for you. That also leads on to Facebook advertising, which you might have explored, you might not have explored, but say if you're a caterer and you're looking for more bookings, right, to make your brand grow and just to get a bit more money in, then you should be doing Facebook advertising. And that would include A-B testing. So you'd run one advert and another advert. One's probably video, one's photo. Video will pretty much always do better on social media. So video is best to do, right? So you have two videos, you upload them, boom. You see which one people respond to better. In its most simplest terms, that is it. You invest a small amount of money in both adverts and then you see which one performs better and then you make tweaks and then you do another A-B test on a slightly different campaign but you keep your one that did better and then you, you, you make an assumption on what made that one do better and keep testing and then once you've found one that's successful you can put more money into that one and see how that campaign goes. If you want me to do a video a bit more about that, let me know. Another one is experimentation. In the early days, we experimented quite a lot. We weren't just doing jackfruit meat, we were doing jackfruit chips, we were trying to make jackfruit jerky. We were seeing what kind of products we could make, but then we stuck with one hero product, right? We didn't just go, we're gonna make all of these different products at one go. We were like, we're just gonna make one because you can focus on that one product, make sure that you're absolutely killing it with it and just do not try and do everything at once. Then once you're happy that you're gaining traction, that's when you can kind of start looking at if you haven't had people contact you already or you're not getting success and that's when you can maybe start looking at going to retailers and maybe securing a letter of intent for your first deal um, and moving forward with that. I think the main thing to consider is that you're, you're talking to a big brand right and they're going to want to know that you're going to kill it. You're going to make a brand that is going to be successful. They're going to sell like hotcakes off the shelves so make sure you can make them confident that they're putting their, their kind of faith in you to make your product fly right. And that involves a killer marketing plan. That's going to be your biggest thing because you need people to know about your brand to go into the shops to go and buy it. I'd say you're probably <laughs> some of your hardest work is at the early days when you're trying to get all your followers and you're trying to get people to recognize your brand and you're developing that audience. So you need to look at different avenues in which you can push it, like I've said. So that would be for us when we're doing a vegan, street, um, vegan food company, we were going to street food events all over the country. We weren't just staying in Birmingham or Bristol. We'd go everywhere, everywhere. And they built up our mailing list and our Instagram following fast. Make sure you've got little notices everywhere telling people to follow your Instagram and don't just like have an assumption that they're gonna do it. A good thing is the light boards that people used to have. I haven't seen them for a while, but that got a lot of attention from ours. And you can get the banners too, which are good. Crowdfunding is the ultimate platform to validate your idea. No doubt about it. It's gonna be the way to prove that people are gonna put their money where their mouth is, essentially. You wanna get people investing pretty much small amounts in your company in return for a product. So it's brilliant to prove traction. And then when you, again, when you go to supermarkets, you can be like, look, we've, we've done this. Or if you go to a bank or you try and get a startup loan, then you have proof that people are willing to buy your product rather than just sales at like a market or at a stall. You're taking it to a bigger level, you know? You're proactively pushing it out there further. I mean, this is especially true if you have a really weird product like us, obviously selling jackfruit. It was kind of unknown at the time. It was a bit odd. It's important to consider because if it's something weird, you want to have killer branding and you want to be able to make it presentable uh, so people are going to buy it if they've never heard of it, right? You want to pique people's interest and that's going to be happening offline rather than in the shop. Just make sure that you don't spend loads of this on your crowdfunding video. It's not necessary unless you're making a killer product and you think you're gonna be selling millions of them. <laughs> be realistic about your goals, right? I just filmed mine at home in the garden. I didn't expect it to really take off. I just blanked it. I winged the whole thing essentially. So I'll put a little bit of the clip here and you can watch it. Hi, I'm Jordan and I'm one half of Project Jack Free. Basically this. Market research is a biggie. All of this stuff comes into your marketing and I don't want to keep you here too long and bore you because you've probably got better things to be doing because you're running your own business but if there's anything that you want me to cover that I've spoken about so far just let me know in the comments down below. In terms of something else that you could do is go into pitch events or incubators. Incubators are pretty much everywhere, they're free. If you're in a city, perfect, because you have NatWest, which is doing an accelerator, which we went to. I think you get two years support for free, you get an office space. All you have to do is apply and make sure your application is killer. Make sure you keep an eye out for pitch events like Virgin Boom or The Pitch 
or anything else that you can think of. They're really good platforms to get exposure even if you don't win. You've got pitch experience which is very important. You always keep developing, you always get better at pitching. I think that's what kind of developed us towards the Virgin one was just the practice because even at the Virgin one I wasn't 100% confident. I just kind of shaking away a little bit with the microphone in front of all these people but you know you just got to play the game you got to get out there and push your brand rather than cooking it all in the kitchen and expecting it all to happen when you, you aren't able to put time into the other stuff that your business needs all of this stuff is an entirely different video though if i start talking about pitching we're going to be here for ages so like i said anything that you want me to expand on if it's marketing advertising let me know in the comments anything at all if it's print if it's digital Whatever you want to know, let me know. It's mainly because obviously I don't know where all of you guys are of your businesses. I don't know if you're at very early days, you haven't made your branding yet, or if you're, you know, just starting to get your first supermarket deal, um, which is kind of where we are now at. I now own a sustainable sneaker company, which we've been working on for over a year. So yeah, check that out. That's called Trash Sneaker Co on Instagram. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, which means you'll be notified by every new video I release, and give me a thumbs up.